Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. It's 10 o'clock, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, before we begin, I want to uh, quickly show you um, how you can uh, interact during this session. Right now, everyone is muted, so uh, if any time you have a question, feel free to um, unmute yourself um, and, and then just speak through your microphone. You also have the option to type your question inside of a chat box, so just click on that chat icon um, and type any questions you have, and uh, there should be a notification that pops up and lets me know whenever someone asks a question. So this is our uh, third session of Class Live. Welcome. Today's um, mini webinar will be about enhancing online feedback. My name is Tan Tran, and I'm an instructional designer uh, for the Class Office of Educational Technology. The purpose of Class Live is to provide you with uh, some sort of forum to discuss teaching, and we want to use it as a way to introduce new technologies to you, or um, for faculty who are newer uh, to revisit older helpful technologies. Um, Class Live is not meant to be comprehensive. It's, we've only designed this to be a 20 to 30 minute uh, talk, and it's meant for you to pop in and out very quickly. Um, or, you know, you can watch it later on, um, the recording later on on your computer uh, during a break. So um, the topic today is enhancing online feedback, and we'll cover two subtopics. The first one will be about effective feedback, and then the second part, uh, we'll get into the types of Blackboard tools um, that can support your online feedback. Um, our goals is to identify best practices for feedback, and then we'll evaluate tools that support it. Uh, since you teach, I know that you know what feedback is, but I want to go ahead and uh, kind of give it a definition so that we can look at how to make it more effective. Um, and so I found uh, this definition um, that I thought was pretty good, and it states, unlike evaluation, which judges performance, feedback is the process of helping our students assess their performance, identify areas where they are right on target, and provide them tips on what they can do in the future to improve in areas that need correcting. So um, in, in my own words, um, to me, feedback is some sort of response um, that, you, that you give to students for their product or their performance. And it's something that you do to provide, uh, you do to help students uh, to improve and work towards accomplishing some type of learning objective or learning outcome or some kind of task. Now, online feedback is any feedback given online. Um, you can use online feedback in face-to-face -face classes or hybrid, and of course, online classes. Um, online feedback can happen in real time, like when you use um, a, a video conferencing. And of course, online feedback can be saved so that students can access it whenever. Uh, feedback happens from the teacher to the student. It can happen from the student to the teacher, and then it can be from a student to student. Uh, just for the purpose of uh, this discussion, uh, I wanna try to focus in on uh, the types of online feedback that happens uh, from the teacher to the student. So first I'd like to look at some of the qualities of effective feedback. Now feedback is not about praise or blame, approval or disapproval. That's what evaluation is, placing value. Feedback is value neutral. It describes what you did and what you did not do. So the first quality um, is that effective feedback usually directly connects to the task or the learning outcome. So it should clearly tell students whether or not they accomplished that objective or mastered some level of it. Um, it should reference back to the task or the objective and explain why or why not students made the grade or earned the points. Now, feedback helps our students see the assignments and tasks we give them as opportunities to learn and grow 
rather than as assaults on their self-concept. So just remember that sometimes comments might come off as judging students' abilities. Um, the more that you can refer back to the task or refer back to the learning outcome, then the more objective the feedback will sound. The second quality um, is that effective feedback is usually very clear and specific. Um, so be specific. What can the student do to get where they need to be? When you're specific about why something was correct or done well or what needs to be improved, students will know what to do to improve. So just um, try to avoid generic comments like good job or try harder um, when you give feedback on assignments that you, that you know required a lot of time for students to work on. The third quality is that effective feedback uh, comes just in time and regularly. So when and how often feedback happens affects its effectiveness. So the sooner you give feedback after an assignment, the easier it is for students to use your feedback to reflect on what they did well or what they need to work on because their process is still fresh inside of their brains. And the last quality I want to um, discuss briefly is that effective feedback usually involves some kind of invitation for the student to follow up with you. Um, and what that means is that feedback doesn't have to end with um, you making the final comments. Um, so uh, your, your feedback can include something like um, an invitation for students to ask questions if they want further clarification. Um, it could be you know, a suggestion to visit your office hours or your TA's office hours to get more help. Um, it could be a second chance, you know, um, a way that students can correct their work to resubmit. Um, now, I, I'm aware that, you know, you have, you may have hundreds of students or um, you have lots of graduate students and it's, it's really intensive giving feedback to um, a large number of students or students who are working at such a high level. Um, there, there are some strategies for you to provide feedback more regularly, though it might not be as personalized, but um, these are some things that I've seen faculty do that I think are, um, uh, that, that I think are really good strategies. So the first one is, um, you all know this already, it's address the whole class instead of, instead of individual students. Um, so feedback to groups or the whole class is appropriate when most of the class is missing a concept or need some type of reinforcement. Um, you can use this through, like a, you can do this through an announcement. Um, sometimes when uh, one student makes a mistake or asks a question to, um, you can clarify it with the whole group and that could benefit everyone. The second strategy is consider peer feedback. Um, so students can, uh, when it, whenever they do peer feedback, they can uh, reflect on their own work as a result of teaching others, and then they can receive feedback from their peers. The third is consider automated feedback. So there are tools in Blackboard, uh, which we'll discuss later, where you can create activities where students can get immediate feedback in order to check their answers. Uh, you, you can uh, customize the feedback to explain why something is correct or incorrect. Uh, another strategy is consider using rubrics. Initially, it does take a lot of time for you to create a rubric, but it pays off when every student receives detailed feedback. So during the grading process, you can set it up so that uh, you can just check off boxes whenever you go through a rubric, um, wherever an explanation applies. Uh, when you use a rubric, you basically develop a set of criteria that describes the task or the learning outcome, and then you assign different ratings and explanations for each of the criteria, and then you can use the rubrics to say a lot, especially um, if it's detailed. So it helps because you're not spending hours writing explanations each time you give feedback to a different student. And then um, uh, just about every Blackboard activity that you can grade inside of Blackboard will allow you to create a rubric for that activity so that you can press a button to just pull it up during the grading process. 
Um, and finally, recycle feedback. Um, this is something I've seen some instructors do. Um, if you produce feedback in text, uh, think about maybe just copying it and saving it in a separate document where you can use it when you notice other students make similar mistakes. So even though you're reusing old feedback to another student, it's, it's new and it's still personalized for them. Uh, so these are some strategies I've seen uh, used by faculty and it can help you be more efficient. Um, just remember that uh, for students, learning is enhanced more by individual feedback. So now let's move on to the next part, which is about Blackboard tools for online feedback. Blackboard provides uh, many tools for you to give feedback, but the, the online feedback method that you use will often depend on the type of online assessment or activity that you use. So if you use a Blackboard activity um, such as a test, assignment Dropbox, or a discussion board, it usually comes with some sort of grading feature that may enable you to add comments, mark up student work, or attach a rubric. When you first get a Blackboard shell and you go through the menus and you click on the drop downs, it will seem like there are a lot of different tools. So some people have commented that Blackboard has too many features and they're not sure where to begin. So um, I want to help you, uh, I want to help narrow this down for you. Um, there are really only a few number of tools that instructors use frequently to give feedback. Um, and all of these are either communication types of tools or assessment types of tools. So for the uh, frequently used communication tools, um, it's email, announcements, uh, Blackboard Collaborate for co video conferencing, discussion boards as a message tool. Um, and then the assessment tools like assignments, tests, blog, discussion board again, Turnitin, surveys, wiki, or collaborate. Um, these, can, these come with the option to grade, comment, or attach a rubric. So some like Turnitin allows you to mark up papers and record your voice comments. Uh, Blackboard Collaborate allows you to video conference and give live feedback. So I found that instructors usually stick with one or two communication tools and then two or three assessment tools um, so that students don't have to learn how to use too many different tools. Now, if you have a hard time deciding which tools can best support your activities, uh, support your assessments, and support you giving online feedback. Um, you know, you always have the option to drop by and visit our office. We're at McElhiney Building. Um, my office is room 338, um, and we can talk to you about, well, what is it that you have in mind that you want to do? And then we can help you narrow it down to um, the tools that will fit your purpose. Uh, something else that you can do um, on your own time is, um, to check out this Blackboard 9 tool guide. And this is something that we will send to you through email after the session is over. And uh, I've, uh, this tool guide was created by Southern Illinois University. And what I like about this guide is that um, it lists all the frequently used Blackboard tools. And then it, um, uh, kind of rates it on how good it is um, as a teaching tool. So uh, in this example, this is the first page of it, it's a, a two-page document. Um, the, on the right side is the technology tool. And then the second column um, gives a rating on how easy it is to use. And then it looks at uh, whether or not this is a good tool for giving information, disseminating Im information to students and then whether or not this is a good tool for a learning activity, for assessment, um, and then whether this tool is good for communication, interaction, uh, and then collaboration. Can students use it to work with others? And then finally, it looks at um, how you can use this tool for certain levels of learning, but I think that last part kind of just depends on how you want to use the tool. Now, depending on the assessment, feedback can be given in different modes 
it can be written, oral, or visual um, online. When you're deciding which mode to give feedback, uh, just keep in mind that when you think that there will be too much information for the student to read, or if the student does not read well, um, then consider using audio or video feedback. When you want students to interact and ask questions right away, um, then use phone or video conferencing. And um, it helps if students are able to keep the feedback to refer back to later. So I went ahead and tried to further categorize uh, different feedback tools um, to kind of help explain uh, what kind of tools can support these different uh, scenarios. So we'll look at whole group, individual, automated, and something called feed forward. So the first one for whole group, um, I recommend using you know, simple announcements or the email tool inside of Blackboard. You can also use uh, the discussion board um, and something called Blackboard Collaborate. The discussion board is like a, a messaging tool where people can go on and leave comments and others can respond back to it. You can also subscribe to discussion uh, board threads so that um, anytime someone comments on there, um, you can get an email. So some instructors use it to set it up as like a, a Q&A um, thread or they, or they just use it as a regular discussion board where um, it's used as an assignment. Um, Blackboard Collaborate is a video conferencing tool and it allows you to share your screen or share a web page and even allows you to record what you do so that students can later review it. For individual feedback, um, you can use tests, uh, which you can design it so that it can be automatically graded or you can go in and give specific feedback to students, especially if it's for like short answer questions or essay questions. You can use an assignment Dropbox um, and something called Turnitin. Uh, the assignment Dropbox and Turnitin is similar as in that you can attach documents to it and then um, use a rubric to grade it. But um, Turnitin takes it one step further by letting you mark up the, the document uh, or the assignment that students submit. And then you can also record audio feedback, which you can attach um, to, the, to, the, to the work that's been marked up. And then um, any activities like discussion board, journal, blogs, and wikis all come with the option for you to um, design it so that it can be graded so that you can leave comments and attach a rubric um, to, the, to these activities uh, so that um, you can more easily grade it later. And then the only Blackboard tool that I can think of that provides automated feedback um, is the test tool. So you can set up your tests so that it can tell students um, whether or not they, uh, a question is correct or incorrect, and you can design it further so that it can give specific feedback, like you can type in, oh, this answer is uh, correct, good job, um, that's because, and then you give an explanation, or this answer is incorrect because, and then you give an explanation, or you can just leave that blank so that they can uh, self-correct themselves and go back and figure out why they got something wrong. And the last thing I wanted to discuss is called feed forward. Um, it's, it's not exactly feedback, but I thought it's worth mentioning. Um, so this definition says that feed forward refers to proactive, preventative feedback used to avoid or respond to known or perceived issues, problematic processes, and challenging concepts or complex tasks. In other words, um, feed forward is just a communication that you provide to students um, where you, when you foresee that some kind of issue is gonna come up, um, and you want to address it um, because you're anticipating that this is gonna happen. Um, so you do it before a student begins an activity or before they submit an assignment. And feed forward could take the form of an email or announcement or a video recording that you send to students before they submit an assignment or before they start on one. So the last um, 
thing I want to talk about, uh, we're running out of time, is uh, student access. And so I just wanted to bring up, um, well, how can feedback be effective if students don't know that they're receiving the feedback? Uh, so just remember, communicate your assessment plan. At the start of the course, it is helpful for students, uh, for you to tell students how you plan to assess, when they should expect it, um, then notify them when it's available, and then even take it a step further and explain how to access the online feedback. Um, so include instructions on where to find the feedback. You will be surprised to learn that many students do not realize their instructors write comments on graded work or they do not know how to access it. Um, in, if you're using Blackboard to give feedback, students see a little notification at the top of the far right corner. And when they click on that, they can see a generic feedback that you leave for them. But if you went through and you marked up an assignment or you, uh, you know, or you uh, checked off a rubric or something like that, they won't see it. So it takes them, they have to do extra steps in order to see the extra things, uh, the extra feedback that you provided inside of Blackboard. So a simple announcement stating that you have graded a paper or left comments on their work along with instructions on how to access it can make a huge difference in how well students do in your course. And lastly, um, make your grades available in Blackboard if you're using Blackboard to give feedback. So if you hide the link to the Blackboard activity or if you hide a gradebook column for an assignment that includes that feedback, then students won't be able to see it. Okay, so that's all I have for you for this session. Um, if you want to watch this recording again or share it with anybody, we'll have this recording available on our website. Um, so at this time, I'll just stick around. If anyone has a question, feel free to unmute yourself um, or type anything in the chat box. Okay, and if you don't have any questions, you're free to go. <laughs> I do have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, are you available to do tutorials with groups in a department? Yes, yes, we do that. That's part of um, our work inside of the Office of Educational Technology. Um, if you need some kind of small group or one-on-one -on -one training or even large group training, um, the, the only the issue with large, larger group trainings is we kind of need you to reserve a space because we don't have a computer lab. Yeah, I was wondering if you could do probably somewhere around 10 people mm -hmm. um, in a classroom, sort of imitating what it might be like. I can explain later, but imitating what it might be like to actually conduct a session with some feedback in it. Okay, sure. And are you thinking about something like, like a, a video session? Is that what you're thinking and what about? I'm thinking of is um, I teach creative writing pedagogy. Okay. And students are interested in how to more effectively use Blackboard because uh, the way creative writing is typically taught uses a lot of paper. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and so we're trying to, to come up with ideas for the graduate students who are beginning their teaching careers to use, let's say, it doesn't have to be Blackboard, but it could be, mm -hmm. um, but use other technologies when there's a face-to-face -face meeting we're not trying to mm -hmm. necessarily do distance learning mm -hmm. but have people effectively use their computers and a lot of it has to do with feedback in real time in a room okay okay i i, I understand um yes yes we can do that we can work something out for you so um before you leave linda's office today um she'll give you my email um or you can just even walk over the corner <laughs> and stop by and talk to me if you want. <laughs> and then we'll work something out for you. Thank yeah. you. Okay, well, uh, I think that's it for today. So um, I hope everyone has a good day. If there's any more questions, feel free to email me at tptran14 at uh.edu. Have a good day. Thank you.